Hi, this is Carl Franklin. You're watching DNR TV from DNRTV.com. Allende Rahin, otherwise known as Oren Eni, is here to show off Raven DB. Hi, Oren. Hi, Carl. How are you doing? I'm great. So we had you on .NET Rocks a little while ago, Richard and I, talking about Raven DB, but I really want to get a sense of what this is all about. So let's show uh, let's show the listeners what what Raven DB is. Okay. Uh, so the quick way of thinking about Raven DB is as a second generation document database, which presumably okay. for most of the listener would mean absolutely nothing. So Carl, here's a you be the guy on the street for me, okay? Sure. When you hear a database, what do you think? What is the first thing that pops to mind? Uh, when somebody says database, I think customers. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because I'm so steeped in demoware, man. Yeah, at least you didn't say um, Northwind. Yeah, I, well, I think, yeah, Northwind, I think uh, of a relational database where I have tables that relate to each other. Okay. And the same thing for NoSQL. What, 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 do you, what pops into mind when I say oh, NoSQL? Um, a flat structure. A flat, you know, uh, flat files. And that's what pops what in is mind. the use case for that? Um, well, as it, as I understand it, um, you're essentially storing documents. And in those documents, you've got uh, links to other documents, but there are no inherent links or relationships in the data structures themselves. Yeah. Uh, w what you're saying is absolutely right, but... Uh, what I find is when most of it, when I'm starting to talk to people about document databases and NoSQL databases, what they immediately jump to is a database is a relational database. And the only use cases for something like a, some, something like GravityDB or other uh, NoSQL databases mm -hmm. is if you're Google, if you're Facebook, oh. if you have some ridiculous amount of users and some ridiculous amount of a request per some amount of time. Okay. So one of the things that was very important to me when I set up to build a RavenDB was basically just break down the, because um, I sat down uh, I think in 2008 mm -hmm. and basically read through the entire code base of CouchDB. And CouchDB is a NoSQL database. It's written in Erlang and to say that the cause is funky is not even getting, cl not, not even, it doesn't approach how strange it is to read a code base like that. Okay. And I learned a lot, I learned a lot about what is a NoSQL database and what is a, a non-relational database from that. But the problem is that it was uh, extremely inapproachable to actually do something with this. Okay. You, uh, especially if you come from the perspective of the .NET, uh, .NET developer. Right. Um, with, I had a lot of disagreement with Microsoft over the years, but one thing that they have generally done very well is they make it very easy to use their technology. Yes. And I don't really like, you know, okay, uh, Let's go into this uh, thing. Let's use this tool, and it has of, it has all of these advantages, but it also has some drastic disadvantages. Right. And a lot of the time, you realize that you don't really have to uh, accept those limitations. This is why I set up to build RavenDB. Okay. And I think that the easiest way of doing that is just. Let's just do something with this, especially since you, people can actually see us working on that. So, okay. th this is a set of documents. And as you can see, documents can be flat, such as the user's example, mm -hmm. which is just a property bug. They can be structured, and they can, and they can be uh, complex objects. Okay. okay. You can see that in the post that we have in a, we have a collection of complex objects. Okay. And let's do something more fun. Uh, we ha to the listeners, we haven't planned for that, but Carl, can you give me some sample domain, something that we can uh, just walk on right here and right here and now? Yeah. Well, let's talk music. Okay. Let's talk about uh, albums and artists. I like that domain. Okay. 
So I created a very trivial uh, MVC application. Okay. Uh, there is some minimal infrastructure. Basically, we're creating the document store here. Those methods here is because I think that the default behavior of MVC of let's throw if you uh, request a get for JSON is stupid. And then we have these two methods. So basically, um, when we're using RevenDB, we start with the document store. In the same way that when you use in Hibernate, you have the session factory, mm-hmm. then the document store in RevenDB is the endpoint to the database. Okay. And I actually have the database running here. This is now running as a, in debug mode, as a console. You can see that it records all of the requests made to it. And okay. So, and now we're, uh, now we're contacting the uh, server on port 8080 on localhost. All right. And before we execute the action, we're going to open the session. And after we completed the action, we're going to dispose of the session. And if there isn't any exception, we're going to actually save the changes. Okay. And now let's create, uh, what is my model? Uh, music. Okay. And what sort of entities do I have? So let's have uh, artists. Artists. We have artists. We have albums. Yep. Okay. And every album has tracks. And what is... We got a name. Yep. We have a length, a duration, exactly. Uh, album will have a title, track will have a name. Basically the same thing. Okay. Uh, so now I created the most trivial example that I can think of. Okay. So let's go and save it to the database. Now, and, okay, there's your controller. All right. Yeah. And now, uh, new album. How many shows do we have now? 600? <laughs> oh, let me take a look. 684 as of this recording. So this is the master album that... Unfortunately, due to limitation of the C- of the CD and DVD formats, we never see the light of day. <laughs> so now we actually need to save it to the database. Okay. Okay. And home slash create. And now we've created this thing. Okay. If we go and look at the console, then you can see that we we have called put and created an album. Now, so that's trivial so far. Yes. So here is how it works. This is the management studio for RavenDB. Okay. okay. As I mentioned, I really like the benefits of working on the .NET platform, mm-hmm. and having nice UI is one of them. So this is very important for logging, but this is how I want to actually work with this stuff on a day-to-day basis. And now you can see here is the document. Yeah. And this looks very much, I mean, this is extremely easy to read. This is a, a very easy to work with. And if we look at the format of the code and the format of the actual a, a, a store data, store document, they are almost almost identical. Yeah. If I wanted a show string ID, not a let's load it from the database. What's the problem? Yeah, action result. And let's see what it takes to show slash one. 
And now you can see this is mm. the actual formatted JSON for doing that. Wow. So what we've basically done, um, we have created some stuff, save it to RavenDB, mm -hmm. and then pull it out. Okay. And if you look, one of the things that we take very seriously is the actual external API that we expose to you. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six methods mm. on the session API. Mm. And most of them, except this is, um, this is slightly advanced, but most of them are strictly about only doing CRUD. Right. Now, and if you want to do the more advanced stuff, it's also there. But it is hidden, um, if you, uh, because the most important thing that you do with a, with a, with a, a database is actually CRUD. So we right. move it to be front and center, not something that you have to look for and cost dozens of methods that has to handle every, every single scenario that you can run into. So the really interesting stuff to me is the R of CRUD, you know, the querying and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, especially when I have complex queries where I'm returning things from multiple documents. Okay. Um, let's, uh, we want to search for an artist. And we want to search for artist by the name. What is the common way you would use to make this happen? Uh, are you asking me in terms of SQL syntax? Or no, are you I'm asking, asking me... you in terms of a, what is the least surprising API? Um, find me show number 420. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me, Ayande. Okay. I want to find all the albums by a, a specific artist by name. Okay. So what is the least surprising API that I can use to do that? What is the API you would expect to see? Are you asking me about link? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. And now we go here and we say artist dot net box. And we got the same uh, entity again, same value. Okay. So you've pro you've proven here that trivial to store data, trivial to retrieve data using link. We know we have SQL like syntax to to pull all that stuff up. That's awesome. Now my question to you is, um, I I really want to know the guts of this stuff. Like I want to know how files are stored. I want to know what's um, you know are you loading stuff up in memory and doing memory searches or uh, What's going on behind the hood? In other words, where am I going to run into a brick wall? Um, okay, let me try to answer each of those questions in turn. Okay. Uh, if we look at the actual, the way that we actually store the data in RavenDB, this is actually stored in, uh, in documents. Documents, and uh, if you actually talk about the actual in-memory uh, physical database, this is where the document actually stored. This is a file, this is a handled transaction list, so you have all of the usual uh, ACID property, ACID property, I always want to say it. And the magic happens when we start talking about indexes. Right. So you can see here, so what is an index in, a, when we're talking about a, a relational database, index is a way to speed up data access. Right. Uh, when you talk about a non-relational database, remember, we haven't done anything to set up the database to prepare it for the new album. So how is it able to actually go ahead and give us answer about this, this thing? For, from the point of view of the database, this is just sequence of bits that you, you told it to store. And the answer for that is that we're able to understand it because the data is in JSON format, and when you ask for something like this, we're going to say, okay, you want us to actually search for all the albums and you want to search for them by their album, by the artist.name. Okay. And in order to do that, you can see what we have done here. Now, this is a link query. 
it's not the same lean query that you have seen that you've seen on the client okay what this basically does is a scan through all of those all of the documents in the database and output just the artist name to an index now when you make the query we are not going to actually load all of the documents in the database we're actually going to consult this index so querying is insanely fast we're talking about usually um in the order of single digit millisecond maybe it goes up to 15 or 20 milliseconds for most queries so and so wait a minute so you're storing a link query for the index yes or to be rather more exact my index definition is the link query all right but this this is assuming now that all of the data that you're choosing from is loaded in memory right no because this doesn't run in memory. Let okay. me show you what actually is happening here. Let me just make things slightly more interesting. Um, this okay, and now, in order to do the sort of thing that RevenDB does, we're using a, something called Lucene. And Lucene is a tool that, think about it like Google in a DLL. It allows okay. you to create um, indexes and then search on them. And it also allows you to make a full text a searches very, very efficiently. Okay. Across so files. Let's, across everything across anything in well you have to tell it how to index stuff but that's basically it and let's look at the data and you see that we have indexes and of course uh so but that temp stuff is handled in memory of course And now let's look at the actual index. Okay, so now you can see what we have what we have here. This is what we actually write to disk. The reason that we we had it in memory is because it was small enough that we could put it all sure. in memory. But sure. uh, so we have disk, and you can see that we have an index for artist name is .NET Rocks. Yeah. That allows me to execute a search very, very efficiently, and then I can get the document ID. And when I get the document ID, I can get you this back. This is this is the basically the secret for how we can execute very efficient searches. Okay. We execute the index expression. So we execute yeah, you know, we close the server. So are those indexes updated every time you modify data? Uh, yes, but in a slightly more complicated way. You know that whenever you write to, whenever you have a large number of indexes in a SQL server, then write a duration goes up. Right. So the more indexes, the slower the writes. I don't really like that. There is another alternative that you do all the work when on the fourth read. And I don't like I, that either. On what? Uh, you can also update the indexes. Let's say that you have a table with lots of indexes that is written more, uh, written a lot, but is rarely written, re rarely read from. Rarely read from, okay. Yes, so you can also say only update the indexes when you read from the table. Oh, all right, sure. Yeah, so... So then the the right operation the right operations uh, are fast, but then what, before you read it's gonna it's gonna be a slow one, yeah. Yes. So I don't like either option. So what I said instead is, with RavenDB reads are going to be fast and writes are going to be fast as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, and free food for everyone and world peace and all yeah. of that. Uh, so the only question is. How can I achieve that? 
And the answer to that is that I've actually broken apart the notion that you have to have immediate con consistency for queries. So for the when we're talking about the sort of data that we actually put in the, in the documents, so if you query a, a, a document, it will always give you the right result. Okay. Uh, that means that it is fully transactional, it acid, all of that. You're never going to get a out of a out of sequence a re result from a document. But when we're talking about indexes, the issue is the story is slightly different because what happens whenever you update a document, we're going to start a background operation to index that document. That's what I figured you were getting at. You're gonna you're gonna you're going to do that in the background, and then exactly. you may or may not get uh, a current result when you do a query that uses the indexes. Yes. So the important bit about uh, the, the reason that this is important is that we can still, let's say that you just uh, written two documents. Well, if we have, uh, if, if we were indexing on writes, then we would have to do uh, we have to update the index at least twice. Right. For once for each of the, once, one for each of those. Because we're doing that in a background operation, we're able to batch most of the update that happened since the last time we ran an indexing operation. Yeah. So we get better performance from there. And we are able to query the index while it is being updated. Right. Okay. So readers don't wait for writers and writers don't wait for readers. All right. The pay the downside is that if you're expecting absolute concurrency, then it's not going to happen. Ah, uh -huh. but yes, it does. Uh, the only question is whatever you're willing to pay for that, right? And you can say something like this: I really care about the consistency of this query. So I want, I'm not willing to accept stale results. All right. So you're willing to wait. Yes. But this is an opt-in feature. Ah, okay. Okay. That's actually, great. You can, you can actually do that for the entire thing. Uh, consistency. So if you configure it like this, this will happen for all of your uh, queries. So you're really giving the user options. Exactly. Yeah. Because think about it. Yeah. For most scenarios, do you really care about up to the millisecond consistency? No, you're right. You're right. And one of the things I, I recently switched my blog from subtext to a raccoon blog, which is the sample application for RavenDB. I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it, Ayende, that's what me why message queues were born. Exactly. Because you got all this stuff coming in. Whereas a message queue would pipe it on the input, you're piping it in the index. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's all. Exactly. And even if, uh, even if we we get it slightly wrong on the index level, we never get it wrong on the document level. Right. So do you ever run into a situation where you take the results of a query that uses an index and the result of a query that uses a document and maybe the document has newer data in it and so you end up with 
a sort of Frankenstein result set? Not really, because... Um, one second. Uh, albums. Okay. What? Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Altis.net. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, because the result from the index. So here's the deal. Remember, we're taking this from here. We're executing the query against the index, but usually what we get is from the index is just the album, the, just the document ID. And then we go into the document store and fetch you the result from the document store. Yeah, what I'm asking is, so the document gets updated first, and then if the index is, let's say you deleted something, you deleted a record, and then you do a query, the index says that that record is there, you go to the you go to the uh, document and it's not. Yeah, that happens, and this is handled internally by RevenDB. A more interesting This is what? I'm is sorry, what? This is something that can happen. And it is handled internally by RevenDB. Oh, it's handled internally. Yeah. But a, a more interesting example would be, let's say that I'm, I want to look at all of the active users. And a millisecond before I executed this query, we have changed a user from active to inactive. Mm. So what will happen is that you will get a user with active equal to false, even though your Query said active active must equal to true. This is because of a uh, on the index side it is still listed as active equal to true. Mm. So that is something you have to be aware of. But this is and this is important. RevenDB let you know about that. You see, this is the REST request. This is the query that we made before using Lint. Is stale. Just using a uh, REST and yes, exactly. We tell you that this is uh, this is rest. We tell we tell you when was the last time that we actually updated hmm. this index, and now you can make decision based on that. Right. For a whole bunch of stuff, you don't really care. Right. Just get me whatever is in the database. Right. And for the times that you do care, you have the facilities uh, to actually do something about it. You aren't just limited to, oh, this is how it works and that's it. Right. Well, that's pretty good. Yes, it is. Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm glad we went through those scenarios because, I mean, those are the things that are on people's minds, you know, when they're when they're considering something like this. Is it going to work? Is it going to be fast enough? Is it going to scale? You know. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about something else. Uh Carl, when we, if you were talking about a relational database, how many tables would this sit in? How many tables would I what? How many, how many tables would this use if we were talking about a relational oh, database? Oh, relational database? Well, three. Okay. But as we have seen, we have used a single document for the entire team. Yeah. And this is a very important concept about a, a documents and association between documents. So the basic idea is that you have two, two, two ways of actually associating between documents. The first, and this is what we've used, this is basically a, embedding a one entity inside another. Right. So in this case, we're going to, we're saying track has no meaning outside of the album. Right. So there is no reason to have tra a, a track number one, track number two, and stuff like that. Right. It's the fifth track on this album. That's it. Yeah. Uh, but by that same token, I think that artists deserve to be its own entity that has a distinct identity from the specific album. Right. Now, this obviously uh, depends very, uh, very much on the type of entity, the type of model, how you're reading, and all of those sort, of, all, all of those sort of things. Sure. So what you're saying is, it makes sense to have an artist document and an album's document. Yes. But not a tracks because tracks require an album. Tracks are part, part, of, part of, an of an album. Yeah. Yeah. The the 
example that I usually use is order and order lines. There is no sense in having an order line without an order. There is no, right. you never refer to an order line uh, outside of its order anyway. So why make it a separate thing? True. Well, it, it's only separate because it's a list of things and that's difficult to store inside of a relational database. There isn't exactly. any list data type. Yes. But, there, but as you've seen, it's very, very easy to just throw this into RevitDB and make it, and it just make it work. Yeah. So now we actually want to make this into a separate thing. Okay. So we will, we will start with this. And let's see what this actually does. And you can do this while your data is out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter how this happens. And uh, we want to look at create, I think. And you can see here that we created two documents. Mm. Artist one and albums, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So let's look at, okay, this is as we expected, but this is not. I would, I mean, it took the entity and still embedded that inside. Oh. Okay. And the reason that it did that is because we have told it to. So we don't do a, any sort of modification to the type, to the uh, way that you structure your data. Okay. Okay. You might have decided that it is a good way, a good idea to denormalize that or stuff like that. So we don't do that. So if you want to have an association, we want to do it like this. Yeah. And in here we need an ID. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll get back to this in a second. Okay. Uh, again, we created another one. Let's look at them. This is the same artist. And now, you can see what we have here. Now mm. we have the ID. Mm. Yep. Okay, so now let's look at how do we handle something like this. Now we want to do something that is very awkward in a document databases. And the reason this is very awkward is that when we think about associations in relation in relation database, it is very natural to have things that are grouped together. Again, because of the structure of the relational database itself, this is how you work. In document database, we tend to treat each document as its own team. We tend to look at each of those as something that is independent from one another. Okay. If we wanted to make this happen, we would actually need to do two queries. First of them would be a First of them would be this, and then we'd have to make another query based on the uh, Okay. And this is pretty much how we would query for that. Okay. And that's fine. It's not um, a smooth, I know, but um, it comes from the understanding that documents are separated and usually you don't have them together. But let's look at, at something a bit more interesting.
let's say that here we want to show the album but we also want to include the artist information so it's interesting how code takes the place of the stored procedure yeah uh so now we can look at this like that and slash home slash show slash item whatever that was 249 okay so now we have album and we have artist hmm. but if you look here you can see that we've made two separate queries to get them right and one of my pet peeves is making more queries than you need right so one of the things that that we can do, we know at the server level what the artist ID is. We can tell RavenDB, look, I'm going to query the artist ID in a second. So, why don't you go ahead and make this happen? So it's going to build an index on the fly? Actually, no. Let's let's see what is what's going to happen now. Okay. It's going to execute, and what it's going to do. It's going to issue this query. Okay. Let me just show you the actual raw results. Queries include equals artist ID. Queries includes equal uh, album slash a. Include. You see what happened? We have the artist, we have the album, which is returning the results. I, I'm not sure about the query. Include okay. artist ID and ID equals albums 2049? Yes. What's that? Okay, this is what we have. ID here is 2049. Okay. And this is the artist ID that we want to include. Oh, all right. So this, in turn, is being translated into includes of artist ID. And here is the album, uh, here is the ID equal to albums 2049. Okay. So this is a pretty much direct translation from the code to the URL that we sent to the server. All right. Now, look at what happened, what we actually get back. We have the results. And in the results, we have the actual document. This is albums 2049. Mm -hmm. But we also have another channel, the includes channel. And that channel includes artist 1025, which is the value in the artist ID property. Okay. I see. Okay. And that's one so, query. Yeah. That is one query. So you can do the es essentially, which is the same as um, doing a multiple select statements in a SQL query and returning those in one result set uh, in multiple tables. No, this is not multiple, uh, this is not multiple uh, select statements. No, 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 I know that, but I'm saying it, it, it's similar results of when you do that in, uh, in think SQL. About, yeah, SQL think server. about this as a correlated subquery. Yeah, exactly. But instead of forcing you into the same output that you already have, we have a totally separate channel just for that. Yeah. And because of that, the next time that now that we make the query for the artist, we only touch on your, we only have to look at the session cache because we have already loaded that from the database. Mm. It's already available for us. Nice. Let me do another thing. I want to get the... Uh, Here is the artist count and hmm. and the 
looking for that, so close the show. So we just execute this thing. Hmm. And again, uh, let me just execute this again, and we will see. You can see that we have made two queries. But you can also see something very interesting. Do you, uh, you see the 304 here? Mm -hmm. The 304 is actually the uh, HTTP result response code for this call. And if you uh, remember uh, HTTP response it's code... Yes, so 304 is not modified. And what this basically means is that you make a query to the server and the RevenDB client API already uh, makes several assumptions about the way it's, you're going to work. So by default, everything is going to be cached. And you make a query to the server, you, you make some sort of query, and we look at our own cache and says, okay, we have, last time that we have executed this query, uh, we got some value from the server. We got a, an e-tag from the server. Right. And let's send the result back to the server and check whatever he, uh, he, it had been modified. Right. If it hadn't been modified, if we get the 304 back, then we don't need to get anything from the server. And we've actually built, uh, we've spent a lot of time thinking about it. So the process of checking on the server, whatever the e-tag is current or not, is extremely cheap. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and we haven't had to do anything about that. It just happens because of the way that RevenDB uh, uh, does things. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about the way to do that in SQL Server is quite convoluted. Yes, let yeah. me show you something else okay so this is my blog and i've moved it to RavenDB about two or three months ago okay and okay you see what just happened what popped up RavenDB profiler yes so this is using RavenDB, and take a look at what happened actually serving this page which is fairly complicated Took only fifteen milliseconds. Yeah, mostly it's most of the time it's cached. Yes. Yeah, and we didn't actually spend any time, any time whatsoever, on performance for the blog. Hmm. But uh, because of the way that we have one of the consistent thing that we have heard from people that I've heard from people ever since moving to the new blog is something like this. Okay. Uh, that it is very, very fast in how it responds to requests. Mm. That is because most of the time, we only have to go to the server to check whatever things have changed. Right. And even if they have changed, we're, we're still very fast then. But it's nice not to, have to, not to have to worry about that. You can see that most of these queries are literally just uh, uh, happening immediately. All right, Allende, it sounds too good to be true. Where are the current gotchas? Okay, so one of the things that you have to be always aware of with caching is the possibility of a stale data. Now, when we set up to say, okay, everything in RavenDB is cached, then we have uh, potentially set you up into, oh, I really want to get the, uh, the correct data, but uh, because of caching, I'm getting the stale data, the data from the cache. So in order to avoid doing that, we still have to contact the server. We still right. have to go to the server to get the 304. Right. We have another mode, which is called aggressive caching, in which case it says, okay, let's say I, I want to cache this, uh, everything that happened inside this block. I can just show you the code to do that. So... So now what we have done is said, okay, if you have this in the cache and this is less than five minutes old, then don't even bother to go to the server. Let's see how this works now. See, so this is the first time that this happened and we have to go to the server. 
Second time, we have no request to the server. But in order to be, in order to allow that, you have to be explicit about this. You have to say, here I want to aggressively catch stuff. If you don't do that, we still get a lot of benefit from caching, but you also have to go to the server to get a three or four back. I see. So you sort of get the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Uh, it does get into a situation where if you're using that in a web farm, then you probably can't really do a aggressive caching right. unless you're willing to accept stellar data. But even if you're using that in web farms and you don't do anything, you still get the benefit of caching just because you don't have to uh, send all of the data over and over on the network. Mm-hmm. You just send the three or four all the time. Right. And it's still really fast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But let me see if I can do something very quickly again. Uh, so another option that we have is this. So you can see that we have executed this uh, total results. Again, this is mostly this is me getting pretty paranoid. Yeah. Uh, one second. Yeah, of course. This is me getting really paranoid about let us reduce the number of remote calls that we make. Yeah. So let's ex- if you execute this now, you see that we get the results. And just clean this again. And let's see this now. Okay. All and right. you see that what we actually did is a multi get. So we basically sent both this query out. Mm. Um, the previous version did something to clear this out, but never mind, clear the albums. Okay. But uh, we sent both of these queries, but we make them lazy. Mm-hmm. So only when we execute this, then we actually send them to the server, but we send them to the server as a single batch. Right, right, okay. Yeah. So this is mostly relevant for some... A perf optimization scenarios, but still a very nice thing to have. Eagerly and lazily. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great stuff, man. And so remind us about how much RavenDB costs. Uh, depending on which uh, scenario you want to use it. So um, the easiest way uh, to put it is if you want to use RavenDB commercially, it's going to cost you. If you want to use RavenDB in an open source project or something like that, then it is free. For commercial use, it is uh, $600 for perpetual license and, or subscription for $25 per month. Okay, great. And where do we get it? RavenDB.org? Uh, no, RavenDB.net. .net, of course. Yes, because we are a .net shop. Awesome. Ayande, thank you so much for showing us exactly what's going on with RavenDB. It looks great, man. Thank you very much for having me here. All right, and we'll see you, dear viewer, next time on DNR TV.